Good afternoon um, and welcome uh, to this very important session with uh, this uh, foremost of women leaders from Ukraine. I think we all were very much touched by the speech and uh, interventions from your president. He really said to us at the end that we should wake up every morning thinking about uh, how we can support Ukraine. He also earlier in his speech mentioned that he was waking up every morning to be informed about how many people had died in their fight for Ukraine. Just think about um, the realities we are faced with. Russia has broken international law, they have broken international humanitarian law, and they have broken the UN Charter in their attack on Ukraine. So, Madam Yulia uh, Sirudenko, Deputy Prime Minister and uh, Minister of Economy of Ukraine, when we wake up in the morning and reflect on how we can support your country in its fight, fight for its territorial integrity and freedom, what more can we do? Okay, it's a ni nice question, good question. First of all, I think I would start uh, with the words of thanks to all democracy country, uh, for those one who support Ukraine, uh, who actually uh, put Ukrainian lives above uh, oil and gas from Russia, who puts Ukrainian love, uh, lives above, um, you know, some benefits that can achieve from, uh, fr from, uh, from Russia. That's why uh, we are really grateful for that support and actually for the first, first days of war, it seems for us gloomy. We predict it's very gloomy, but no, because of resilience of Ukrainian business and because of the assistance from uh, our partner side, um, all essential systems are operating. Banking system, IT sector, retail chains, uh, you know, uh, railways, post service, they all are operational right now. So uh, now, actually, at the, at the first uh, week of, of the Russian invasion, it seems for us uh, that um, the growing season is going to be under the collapse. But now our Ukrainian farmers, they uh, you know, we use all, all uh, uh, land just for, for, for providing us with uh, the food and providing the world, world uh, with the food. So now uh, what we need from your side, we need your assistance in unblocked uh, the Black Sea ports. So it's essential things for us as we need to export, as we are, um, uh, you know, export-oriented country. It's for us it's essential to have this opportunity to export. That's why we need to unite uh, your efforts, United States, EU efforts, all efforts to, to uh, arrange uh, this export uh, operation. Of course, it's uh, related to the defense issue, but anyway, we need to move further. Of course, um, uh, you know, we are under our infrastructure under uh, attack every day, but we are uh, not giving up and we are continuing to fight in. And that's why I think that economic front um, as essential as a military front, and that's why uh, do, doing uh, act, uh, actually some, some measures that are you providing us with help us uh, to fight uh, with uh, Russian invaders on economic front. It's not uh, the less than the military one. Um, so that's why we, uh, as I told you, we're not giving up. We uh, have Ukrainian uh, rather brave people, people, and uh, our business show resilience. And I think if you can increase your support. Of course, on public finance, uh, you have to have a president at least of five billion per month. And uh, of course, we need this money now, but we are fighting for the, our uh, future. So that's why uh, it's the second uh, items after the reblocking port that we are uh, struggling right now. And the third one, of course, it's our frozen assets of uh, Russians. So uh, Russian oligarchs, uh, they can be uh, confiscated in proper way and be directed uh, to the fund that might cover all these damages caused by invasors. That's why I think that these uh, three items we can focus on and uh, we uh, would be grateful if you can increase your sanction policy and can, can, can focus on the three items that can solve us and help us to fight on economic front. No, thank you so much. And uh, I'm glad uh, to be able to inform you that uh, 
on Wednesday, uh, there will be uh, a meeting, and I think you're already invited, Deputy Prime Minister, where 70 CEOs now have signed up for CEOs for Ukraine. Also showing that the private sector is really walking uh, the talk. I think that's a good segue uh, to uh, you, uh, Yevgenia Akrapchuk, a member of uh, Parliament, and when we prepared this session, you told me that you are, on behalf of the parliamentarians, you have coined uh, your group as Women Diplomatic Battalion. Yes, that's right. <laughs> And uh, I guess you also uh, listened to what uh, Deputy Prime Minister said about uh, rebuilding and reconstructing uh, Ukraine and how can we support uh, both humanitarian way but also to create the future for the young people of Ukraine. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, um, I wanted to tell you that the war is still there. I brought you a piece of striking element of Iskander missile that hit Kyiv region in March. It was collected by my husband, who is police officer in Kyiv region. And he told me, bring this and show this to political leaders, uh, to organizations, and tell that we are still suffering and we need to win in this war to stop the suffer of Ukraine and give the future to our kids, to my eight years old kid who has to go to basement when we have an air siren. Um, speaking about the humanitarian needs and humanitarian crisis, I will say that uh, you know, we have different stages of uh, humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, and the closer you go to Russia, the worse is situation. So this is the key, you know, the presence of Russia on our territory. We have um, around of 12, 12 million people that had to change their location. Five million people had left the country, but they want to come back. Uh, seven million people are IDPs, inter uh, internally displaced people. Of course, they need uh, a place to live, social uh, services, they need to go to the hospital um, to, to, you know, to find a new school, at least online. And uh, thank you for the support, of course, for uh, our people outside of the country and also helping uh, humanitarily um, inside of the country. And we see that we sort of switched uh, from what we needed from the very beginning, like food uh, and, and, and medicine. Now we need, uh, of course, we need financial aid. Uh, also, we need uh, petroleum and diesel because there's a shortage of uh, gasoline in Ukraine and it both are very important for economy and for uh, just for people to live in the country. But you know, when I'm asked what is the best humanitarian aid for Ukraine, I answer weapons, more weapons. Because you can send us for years tourniquets, food, medicine, but if you send us enough of weapons, if you put sanctions strong enough uh, to Putin to stop this war, uh, not to, to go further, not to have money. Because when you pay for gas and oil from uh, Russia, it returns as the striking element or a bullet to innocent child. Today, 11 years old girl died in the hospital. She was from Luhansk region, and she became 233rd victim of this war, a child that died because of this war. And then you have these occupied territories and the situation there, it's not a humanitarian crisis, it's humanitarian help. Because Russians will not let uh, the, the food and medicine inside of these territories and they're not letting people out. In Kherson region, in the south, people stay for five days in the cars, in the field, and Russians will not let them go out. So please help us. Please give us more weapons, more financial aid to be sustainable in this situation, and we need to win this war, because this is the only way to end these atrocities, to end the suffering of people, to end this humanitarian crisis. Thank you. Just reflecting on the fact that uh, breaking uh, basic international law, uh, even hitting schools where children are being taught, that I think is, uh, uh, we haven't seen this um, for in many, many years. It is uh, such a telling story. 
there's still a strong uh, private sector uh, in Ukraine, and we heard that President Zelensky also said in his speech that uh, for those that are uh, in solidarity with Ukraine, you will remember and they will also uh, do well uh, when it comes to business in Ukraine. Uh, this uh, 43 million uh, people, and it's uh, still uh, a powerful nation. We have um, with us uh, also Yulia Kirianova, uh, CEO of uh, Smart Holding, um, uh, impactful uh, company uh, in uh, Ukraine. And I was wondering, how can you run your company in the middle of uh, war? How is it with employment? Are people coming uh, to work? Uh, how can uh, you run your business? Yes, we are, as the whole uh, business society in Ukraine does. But maybe we start from the small introduction. Uh, we are the strategic investor in Ukraine, operating in more than eight industries was quite a diversified portfolio. But first of all, I would like to reflect on Mr. President said in business terms. Um, actually, I'm in business for 20 years. All these years, I work 24 seven. And uh, I see how business community does the same. We survived the crisis of 2008, at the beginning of war 2014 pandemic crisis. Also, we su survived all the elections, you know, and this is a challenge for the business, uh, not just to operate, but to develop further. And uh, uh, we are like Alice in Wonderland. We have to run quicker to stay where we are, and we are not staying where we are. Where we are. And you can see it by the numbers in the Ukrainian economy. So, um, and unfortunately, this is not the hard work that brought us to this stage, um, but the war. And uh, um, I would say that the war impact is unprecedented. So, uh, looking back at 2014, uh, we, we, we didn't experience that much of a pressure on all industries in the country. Uh, we are, our business portfolio has three key industries to the economy. Two of them are export oriented, steel industry and agriculture, as well as gas production. So let me uh, brief you on what's going on in big numbers for you to understand what is the scale. So in steel industry, in 21, we produced, the, the whole industry produced 23.5 million tons of steel products and merchant peak iron. Now, and we exported 80% of that, now it dropped to eight something and six to be exported. This is one third. And the reason of that uh, actually, we have a stake in the largest uh, uh, steel and iron ore producer, Metinvest, and we contribute 70% of exports to the entire export of the country. Uh, two steel mills uh, went out of operation in Mariupol for the reasons you know. There are some other businesses that uh, are not uh, operating and uh, this is 53% uh, of the steel industry in general. Iron ore is a different story uh, because uh, here uh, the export channels are not working well, therefore can, we just do not increase uh, production enough to be able to export everything. On the gas industry, uh, sorry, I would um, talk about agriculture now. In agriculture, um, the key um, uh, export products are corn and wheat. We produce 54% uh, less of corn and 35 of wheat. We have a company, Harvest, that, that is among top uh, 10 ag agrarians in Ukraine. And we have lost 68% of arable land. So um, the gas is 22% down. I may continue that. But um, to wrap it all, um, I would say that um, 
throughout our portfolio, we see more than 50% down in the production. However, there is a good news. We are alive. And by saying that, I do not mean only that we struggle every day and keep going uh, with all our employees. I am saying that we are looking in the future. And yes, this is when you stop thinking about the future, you are dead and the enemy wants us dead. So we Thank are you. alive. Thank you. Thank you. And um, um, it's about the future and we have one of our global shapers with us too. I, I just saw an, a news flash coming in here. A Russian soldier was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison in Ukraine's first war crimes trial since the invasion began. Sending also a strong message about the atrocities uh, you have seen. And I think uh, we have all been uh, just uh, heartbroken uh, to see uh, what this war has brought and the way also um, the Ukrainian people are suffering. Let me then go to Liana Avtonomava, uh, your uh, young global shaper, impact officer at Kiev Hub. And I know also um, based on uh, the crisis and the humanitarian sufferings you are seeing, you have started an NGO to deal with mental health, but you are also looking into the future, how to build a future for the young generation uh, in Ukraine. So, uh, great to have you here, Liliana. Floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, I think that I'm here with one very clear message that we need together not only rebuild the country, but we want to reimagine the country. We want to unite the whole world, our government, business, civil society, and all the international partners not to just rebuild the country, to build buildings as they were. We want to reimagine. We want to, and I'm part of the Restart Ukraine initiative, which is gathering architects, anthropologists, urban designers, all with foreign education, to build in new, new cities, new villages, using the latest technologies to build cities and villages, not for the 21st century, but for the, to, for the 22nd century. And for that, we need all the knowledge, all the expertise, dream, ambition, not only from Ukraine, but from across the globe. And we ask to join us on this journey, and we ask you to be bold, to think how we actually can do it, how we actually can use all the latest technologies to build new cities, to build new areas, to reimagine civil society, governance, uh, to think how like digital currencies could influence daily lives of people. And for that, we need to join international community and the best knowledge bring it to Ukraine and do it together with Ukrainians. Um, yeah, and to, to build on that, I want to say that the world, I, I want to, uh, to say that the world for the next 10 years or five years of our lives, I want to name it as a collaboration of government, civil society, and business. And I want to ask as well our governance to be very open to these new ideas, to be open, to open the doors so that we can make Ukraine, let's say, an urban laboratory. Uh, and then also um, provide solutions for the world. Uh, because we're not only the only country in crisis, um, and we can be the provider of solutions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, so much. Uh, I know that time has run out for our panel, but I would like to go back to you for a short question and a short answer, uh, Deputy uh, Prime Minister. You know, uh, it is for us, uh, it is such an honor to have had you here. And uh, we can almost not with words uh, really tell uh, how much uh, we admire uh, your courage. But of course, as you also alluded to, Deputy Prime Minister, words is what, one thing, but you also have to see international solidarity really no happening. And um, what would be your challenge uh, to 
uh, the powerful business community of the world here now as a, as a short end of this uh, session. Over to you. So actually, um, you know, I think all our panelists, we are focused and make, um, so we understand that we need to rebuild the new country. Uh, we need to, uh, we, to rethink about uh, the development, of course, from our partners, as I told you. So we need to, uh, I would like to, to stress once again, we need to enlarge sanction uh, to provide the secondary sanction. We need uh, to, you know, to right now, uh, we're challenging with a shortage of uh, our finance, so we need uh, your support, financial support there. We need to unblock uh, the seaports. From our side, we are starting to think about the recovery plan of Ukraine, and we are absolutely sure, and uh, I think we need your assistance, as we think that, uh, mm, first of all, we need to become and to obtain uh, the full membership of EU. We want to have the full access to G7 or the EU market. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're happy that United Kingdom and EU and Canada were the first uh, who lifted all duties for Ukrainian goods and uh, give us the opportunity to export more on that market. Uh, of course, we would like to develop uh, new industries uh, and absolutely agree with my colleagues. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be, uh, we will develop more um, uh, that industry that already good structured in Ukraine. IT, uh, it's, it's going to be steel industry, it's going to be agricultural proceeds industry, and of course, uh, it's going to be military. Military is uh, number one items. I think that uh, the question related to uh, safety, to defense, uh, will go through all sectors in the next, I think, 20 or 30 decades. So that's why in all these issues, we need your assistance, and in all these issues, we need to have a frank dialogue with our European partners, and of course, Resilience of our business is amazing, and but uh, with your support, uh, uh, if you enlarge sanction and you give us more support, we will win the war. I think soon. That's why we really need your assistance. Thank you. No, thank you, uh, thank you so much. I I think you were right, Yevgenia, when you said that this is uh, women diplomatic battalion. I, I felt uh, very uh, strong messages uh, from these uh, really um, foremost uh, women leaders of Ukraine. Uh, your country can be proud of you, we are proud of you, and I'm also challenging all the CEOs here to join uh, CEOs for Ukraine meeting on Wednesday afternoon to really walk the talk and so show real solidarity with Ukraine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Believe in Ukraine as much as we believe in Ukraine. <laughs>